Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have here with me Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna will be blessing us with a song. <laughs> Uh, a yes. very short song. A very short song. <laughs> from song. from a heart, from a big heart. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and um, but before we go to that, uh, this a song. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. This wonderful sunny day here in Northern California, and we just thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of life that you bestow upon us. And we pray that you'll be with us today. You'll help us to give this message from our hearts uh, through the words that you place within us, Lord. And we, we thank you for those who are here. And, and we pray that you will be with them and bless their ears, put your spirit upon their ears and cause them to hear the very words that you have for them and give them the understanding that they may be know to walk with you and in the words, in your words, and be blessed by them. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you're doing in our lives. We pray that you'll just continue that work in us and keep us, and just keep us here safe and, and just bless those, bless our loved ones, and, and bless those who are, are traveling, Lord, and, and just keep them safe. Give them your mercies and your grace wherever they are, Lord. And and we thank you for all the things that you're doing. And we give you all the honor, all the praises, and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now, Sister Joanna. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Oh, there's so much need um, for cleansing in our lives. And um I, I just feel burdened um, with all that is in me that needs to be cleansed. And I had a verse, uh, these couple little verses from, I believe it's Psalm 51. Give me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. <clears throat> Give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me so that the world will know that yours is the love I know. A clean heart, renew a right spirit. I want the world to know that yours is the love I Give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me so that the world will not that yours is the love I know. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Thank you. What a beautiful, wonderful song to start our message today. And now for our good news message today entitled the chosen lady. And uh, so, uh, and here we go. We'll begin with the introduction. The days. <laughs> Today's Sabbath message continues our study of the letters of John. In these, John refers to himself as the elder. He presents the messages from a personal perspective. The church in 2 John is addressed figuratively as chosen lady. And I say it figuratively 
because that is not the, the message is not not addressed to a lady, but the church itself. And so that's the figure of speech that we, we uh, are indicating here. Third John is addressed to Gaius, a beloved brother. And both members are typically viewed as onlookers as the message is addressed primarily to them. In both letters, John expresses his preferred desire to deliver the message in person rather than writing. In addition to second and third John, we will also present the letter of Jude. Since the three letters are all relatively short, it is sufficient to place all three into one study. Amen. 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 And so we'll, we'll begin with some readings from our previous message. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 3 through 7, the scripture read, reads, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. <laughs> who is the one who overcomes the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Now, let's stop here for a second. This is the one who came by water and blood. Now, when Jesus was on the cross, a centurion, uh, a member of the, the uh, centurions went and, and he, he went there to confirm that he was dead. So he took a spear and he shoved it in his, under his rib into his body. And what came out was water and blood. Now, and then it says here, yeah, this is one who came by water and blood. Now he came, he, he, he came, when he came, it was his death. He died with water and blood. He was, he was revealed, he was by water and blood. And, and that's how they confirmed his death. And so, however, now again, we know that the water is indicative of his flesh. Because when a child is in their mother's womb, they're encased in water. And so his life and what he gave in his life was water and blood. The blood that was flow through his veins, the water that he came from when in the womb of his mother, uh, he spilled out in his death. And, and from that, his spirit, he gave his spirit from those two things his spirit came, and so he came. The spirit of Jesus came by water and blood. Amen. Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. And we just discussed that, how that process happened. The three are in agreement. They all work together to bring Jesus to us in the spirit. Amen. <clears throat> to the chosen lady, 2 John verses 1 through 3. The elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth because of the truth which remains in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. According to his commandments, 2 John 4 through 11, I was overjoyed to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we have received a commandment to do from the Father. Now I ask you, lady, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but the one which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, 
that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, that you are to walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves, that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not remain in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who remains in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting, for the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. Amen. <clears throat> and so uh, some further comments the Lord has put on my heart regarding what Sister Joanna just read. Um, and I've entitled this Walking in the Truth. Well, it is entitled Walking in the Truth, and that's how God wrote it. John previously wrote in his gospel the words of Jesus. If you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus' words are the truth, and it is actually said in John that Jesus is the truth. And so his word is him. Jesus brought life into this world through him. He was, he was, he was, is the indelible word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And that's how the letter of John, the gospel of John begins with the word of God. And his word is truth. And he is the great I am of truth. I am the truth. And that signifies his, his name, the name of God, which is I am. And, and that was the name that God told Moses when Moses said, I'm, you you asking me to go and, and tell these people that God has sent me, who should I tell them you are? What is your name? And the Lord said to Moses, I am who I am. Thus you should say to the Israelites, I am has sent me. Amen. Amen. Walking in the truth. In his <clears throat> opening statement to the chosen lady, John emphasized his words as in truth, for the sake of those who abide in the truth. Further, he was glad to find some of her children walking in the truth. Verse four. Then he spoke concerning a commandment, not a new commandment, but one from the beginning, that is, love one another. And that is the sum total of the Ten Commandments is love one another. Love God and love one another. Amen. Amen. And John's closing um, to the people in sec that he speaks to in 2 John 12 and 13. Though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink but I hope to come to you and speak face to face so that your joy may be made complete. The children of your chosen sister greet you. I note that comment, the children of your chosen sister. Okay, the children of your sister. John speaks metaphorically about his writings and the chosen sister. In his closing statement, he refers to the children of her closing sister. He was writing this to, to the, the uh, lady, chosen lady. And so his chosen sister, simply a different church, another church. He speaks of, he, he uh, signifies his churches as people, metaphorically. Okay. This conceivable is another church being referred to as a lady, as in the church to whom he is writing. In like manner, he wishes to appear in person as a living message rather than using paper and ink. Third John, walking in truth. Verses one through 14. 
the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. For I was overjoyed when brothers came and testified to your truth, that is, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear of my children walking in the truth. Beloved, you are acting faithfully in whatever you accomplish for the brothers and sisters, and especially when they are strangers, and they have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God, for they went out for the sake of the name. And you see name is capitalized here. It's referring to the name of Jesus, for they went out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support such people so that we may prove to be fellow workers with the truth. I wrote something to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first among them, does not accept what we say. For this reason, if I come, I will call attention to his deeds, which he does, unjustly accusing us with malicious words and not satisfied with this. He himself does not receive the brothers either, and he forbids those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does what is good is of God. The one who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. And we testify too. And you know that our testimony is true. I had many things to write to you, but I do not want to write to you with pen and ink but I hope to see you shortly and we will speak face to face. Amen. And so praise for walking in the truth and uh, comments the Lord put on my heart regarding what was just read. The letter is addressed to the beloved Gaius as he leads others by walking in the truth. John the Elder expresses gratitude for reports of his walking in truth and acting faithfully toward the brethren, especially strangers. They all bear witness to his love before the church. Demetrius has also received a good testimony from everyone and the truth itself. Amen. He has more to write to them not with pen and ink, but rather hope to speak to them face to face. John promises to call attention to Diotrephes' unjust deeds when he comes. He cautions the beloved to not imitate what is evil. God is good, and the one who does evil has not seen God. 3 John 11. The epistle of Jude the greeting and salutation, Jude 1 through 3. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are the called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all time handed down to the saints. Okay. <clears throat> Greeting, she read, which she read, and reason for writing. And so some words regarding that. The letter is addressed to those who are beloved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. The writer is noted as the brother of James and arguably the brother of Jesus. 
And I said, arguably, because this it's not a sure thing that there could be a different uh, Jude. Um, yes. But uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. There, there is more than one Jude who could have possibly written mm. this. That's that's my that's what I want to make clear. Uh, so, but if you look at Matthew thirteen fifty five and Mark six three, you'll you'll see why it 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 could possibly be Jude, um, and because Jude was one of Jesus' brothers, Judas. His name was Judas then, but they referred to Judas as Jude in writings. Okay, the reason for writing is listed as our common salvation and appeal to contend for the faith. Okay. Ungodly warnings in history. Jude 4 through 16. For certain people have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into indecent behavior and deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now I want to remind you, though you know everything once and for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. And angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper dwelling place. These he has kept in eternal restraints under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these angels indulged in sexual perversion and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. So we had talked earlier about um, the angels abandoning their domain, and you wanted to make some comments about that, right? About yes, these. yes. And yeah, we, we've read about this in, in Genesis, that uh, some of the angels came down and they took wives from the sons of men and, and they fathered uh, offspring by them, children. And, um, and, but this was forbidden by God and, and they left their own uh, domain. And, and so he, he will punish them and, and he, he keeps them and he's holding them for judgment in the end, in the end times. Yeah, and then here he compares their behavior to the behavior of those in Sodom and Gomorrah and right. the cities around them who indulged in um, sexual sin and perversion. Yes. And now he goes on to say in verse 8, Yet in the same way these people also, dreaming, defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak abusively of angelic majesties, but Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him an abusive judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people disparage all the things that they do not understand and all the things that they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, by these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have given themselves up to the error of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are the ones who are hidden reefs in your love feasts when they feast with you without mm. fear, like shepherds caring only for themselves, clouds without water carried along by winds, Autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea, churning up their own shameful deeds like dirty foam. Wandering stars for whom the gloom of darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these people that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, 
the Lord has come with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. Yes, and earlier, she noticed that you noticed that statement saying these people are like hidden reefs in your love fe yeah. feast. And, and that's an amazing comment because they that shows you how people can disguise themselves as being among you, being one of you. They, they just put themselves in as a reef and a love feast and like they belong there. And but that just shelters them so you won't recognize them. And uh, so I, I just thought that was uh, an amazing comment there to uh, to point out. Okay, uh, and many of these people are marked for condemnation. Uh, Jude asserted that some among them were ungodly persons marked for condemnation, having turned God's grace into licentiousness. Licentiousness. Lice, yeah, <laughs> licentiousness. Thank you, Sister Joanna. He reminded them that after saving the people out of Egypt, the Lord destroyed those who did not believe. Angels who left their own domain, he has kept in bonds of, for judgment day. When Michael the archangel argued with the devil about the body of Moses, did not pronounce judgment, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. And notice uh, Michael's response. He knew that the Lord will knew how to take care of that. And he didn't have to rail against, the, even though he was the devil, it was not of him to, to rail against him, but to just simply say the Lord rebuke you. And that was enough. That was powerful enough. And Satan knew the power of God. And so when he said the Lord rebuke you, that was a powerful thing for him, that something for him to, do, to, to uh, re resent. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Jude 17 through 25. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last time, there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life, and have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some, have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hold Amen. On. <clears throat> One statement I'd like to point out uh, was when he said, but you building yourself up on your most holy faith. And that's how we grow in, in God, through our faith. And there was another statement right after that, which I can't recall now that I want to add to. Um, go back. Building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying and praying in the Holy Spirit. How could I forget that? 
praying in the Holy Spirit and having that spirit and 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 just uh, building yourself up, praying in the spirit and having this faith and having this spirit. And that's what God has for us. And that's how we grow in the love of God. And that's how we 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 come to uh, where he wants us. That's how we grow. And uh, and so let's let's go on, Joanna, to the comments. Remember the words of our Lord. Remember the words of our apostles about the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be mockers in the last days, following after their ungodly lusts. These are divisive, worldly minded, and devoid of the spirit. As for you, build yourself up on your faith. Pray in the spirit and keep in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord, Jesus Christ, to eternal life. Glory, majesty, and dominion forever. Amen. Amen. And now we come to the conclusion. And our first uh, passage will be Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 27. And it says, and it's totally uh, reminiscent of our message today, um, the chosen lady. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. That he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot of wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Amen. And John uh, 13, verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. And do this, understanding the occasion. The Lord has come for you. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day has, dawned, has drawn near. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, we... We thank you for this word today, and we just thank you for just giving us these words that we may share them with those around us, share them with those who are listening to this Sabbath message today, Lord, and words that will keep us and, and show us uh, how to go, how to find you, to help us to know those who are against you and who are against us, Lord, and just be with us, Lord. Be with us this day and, and every day, Lord, and help us to grow in your love, in your truth, and in your faith, Lord, and, and just be filled with your spirit and grow and, and just manifest your love to those around us as you manifest your love to us, Lord. And we just thank you for this day and every day that you give us. And we just give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.